British weather's reverted to type. The sunshine we had yesterday must have been an anomaly. It's Tuesday in my week off work. I still feel like death warmed up, as per usual. So I say it's time we set the ultrasonic to bake. And uh, we'll start getting this bike back together again. I spent some time yesterday and took the uh, remainder of the sprocket attachment equipment off. Cleaned this up a bit, went around with the auto sole, looks a lot more respectable now. Um, did check the bearing out, seems fine for now. If it's not, it's only a couple of quid to replace. Just need to get a few more bits of the, the grime off, and then we'll pop a new sprocket on, which we got on the parts pile behind us, and um, see about getting the Kender onto this rim as well. Got some replacement... Uh, I don't know what you call this really, spoke protection tape. I know it's really to protect the tube, but might have a look at putting that on if needs be, because there's a few bits of this missing. Um, before we can put that back on the bike though, we've got to take the swing arm down from hanging over there, get the uh, furniture back on it, including this piece that uh, I think the chain runs along, and then bolt it back to the bike. So hopefully by the end of today, we can at least have the uh, wheel back on again okay quick progress update got the swing arms bolted back in but not tightened up I've put the air box back in put the loom back started plugging things back in uh, got the crankcase breather and then over here this is most of the wiring that goes to the back reinstalled the CDI box um, and just sort of bolting this stuff up I'll do the swing arm bolt properly when I've got the rear shocks uh, back attached to set the neutral position otherwise you tension the bushes the wrong way and they fail quicker um, there's a page in the workshop manual about that just looking down here this is the side stand switch probably going to need some um, love because it looks like someone's been here before probably for the grand challenge I'll just um, bypass it but if my other half's going to use this bike after or during that then I'll um, order up a new switch and sort the crusty wiring down there out the other thing is I'm just hitting uh, any hidden points with ACF 50 as I go here just so that they're protected later down the line I'm not doing a very neat job of it just trying to get it over bolt heads and um, exposed metal that won't be easy to get to once everything's back together I have no idea if this is legit or not but this is what the bike came with to secure its um, negative battery post because it's a bit of a fishing act to go through here and the batteries in this box behind but yeah <laughs> I don't know whether it's legit or not, but I'm keeping it because it, it works. I mean, it doesn't seem super Yamaha, but, you know. Would it even be a 125 with eight previous owners if the battery mounting hardware wasn't suspicious and the sodding strap wasn't missing? Honestly, what, what do people do? Where does it go? Is there a pile of these somewhere? All coming together pretty fast now. Uh, just got these shocks on, dab of silicon oil on the bottom bushes to get them to go over the pins, tidied up the wiring, um, got a few more bolts to put in for the air box, but um, I've thrown the battery in and just checked. It doesn't catch fire. So that's still good, um, and we do still have spark. I just wedged a screwdriver up the uh, plug boot and check that. So I'm just gonna carry on screwing this thing back together loosely, um, and then we'll see what parts we're still missing and uh, take it from there. Two shiny new shock absorbers. Starting to look like a bike again. I suspect we're gonna need this rear wheel again soon, so let's uh, go new sprocket time. There's a lip in the back of this, which engages with these flats, so you gotta make sure you get it on the right way round. Like so. Then it's time for mounting hardware, which has been over here soaking in ACF 50, having been through the ultrasonic. So first of all, what might be a thrust washer. And then uh, let's see if we have as good a luck with this as we did on the way off.
another case of do as I say, not as I do. We're probably going to want some more of these because that's, um, that's not ideal. It does sort of look like a trained monkey has been at this last time the uh, sprocket was off. What do you reckon? Is this one going to snap? There it goes. Evidently someone learnt on this side and perfected their skill on this side. I'm sure there will be some people out there in the audience who are going to tell me that I am a danger to everyone on the road by not replacing these absolutely immediately. And I don't entirely disagree with you, but um, some bikes, including the Tomos behind, only has one tiny little, uh, probably less than 2 mil wide tab from factory, uh, and that's only on every other nut. So. I'm actually way more comfortable than I should be with the amount of locking that I've got going on here, especially peening these corners over, like so. If I can find a set of these uh, going for a reasonable price, I'll pick them up, but uh, famous last words, that's not going anywhere. I guess it's time to put a tyre on this. I wonder how many inner tubes I'm going to pinch this time. Well, you get to watch the whole show. I'm nowhere near good at this. way easier if you're outside and it's not raining where you can uh, be above the tyre. Can't resist a bit of bling after that struggle. So I've taken care of some more awkward, horrible, fiddly jobs, uh, putting on carb pipes, the carb itself, getting all the rubber boots to go back where they're supposed to go, um, breather tubes and all that sort of thing that doesn't make very good video. It's also blowing pretty strong out here, so uh, didn't want to subject you to all that sort of noise. But uh, I think what we might do now is uh, see if I've got any petrol kicking around and see if it starts up with the newly cleaned car. That way we can warm it up, let it idle, dump the oil and change that. Um, and then I think once we're done there, it's on to uh, a 
a bit of styling and then taking care of the front brakes, the forks and the front tyre. Let's find out if all this messing about has broken it entirely or whether we've still got a bike, shall we? Let's go everything it needs to run now, including a little bit of fuel in the tank, so let's see what happens. Just like that, apparently. Thank the universe for ultrasonic cleaners. One last thing for today, now we've got it running, um, is just to check whether it's charging or not. So that's the bike completely off. It's quite a hefty surface charge on the battery, I think. So I'm going to turn it on. Um, I'm just going to put the high beam on. Should drag the voltage down and then start her up. And yep, looks like we've got working stator and regulator. Awesome. It's another day, and um, much like everyone else, I can't resist a cold start, but I have noticed the choke doesn't stay out. So I'm going to pop that choke module out and just see if there's anything we can do to it before we uh, see if this thing will cold start. Here's the culprit. I suspect it might be missing a spring. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Or a clip or something that's meant to be in here. But um, we'll take a look. Looks like there was indeed supposed to be a C-clip in that groove. Um, but it's obviously worn out and uh, disappeared over time. So I'll see if I can find a replacement for that later. But um, for now we might just have to hold it. Fuel on. Ignition on, run. Definitely going to need that choke. Nice. All right, step one of uh, sorting out the front end of the bike is this caliper. I've just popped it off. It's probably going to leak brake fluid everywhere. Um, but at the moment, the slides are stuck. I'm hoping not too badly. No, not awful. And they might be rescuable. We'll take a look in a minute. There's not too much corrosion down the um, the pin channels and the boots look to have held up. So uh, next thing, let's try and get these pads out. Looks like this pin here might be what holds them in. Not met one like that before. There we go. Oh, that's in there. Let's use something with a plastic shank. Might be able to get one pad out. Another million dollar question. How badly seized is this piston, if at all?
Bear with me, I'll be back after a fight. Well, I've never met a bucket that reluctant to come out of a caliper. But, as you can see, that took heat and um, bare vice grips and my entire body weight hanging off it just to get it to rotate. Looks like there's been some rust happening between this and something on the inside. Possibly there's a metal spring in a seal or something. But um, this caliper's not looking too hopeful, to be honest. It's all a bit crispy. So um, I'll price up what it's going to cost to replace the seals um, versus just the bucket, the seals. Or possibly just buy a, either a second-hand caliper that's working and refurb that, or possibly a new one. I know these things aren't too dear. Let me know what I decide. Um, the other thing is the master cylinder. I don't know what state it's in. It appears to have uh, good fluid in it, but the window is all crazed and probably not long for cracking, so I wonder if I can get a decent um, decent price on the whole lot and we'll just fit brand new, because if this was just the Grand Challenge bike for me, um, and that's all it was ever going to do, I might just cobble this back together, um, but my other half wants to have a go because it's a 125, um, and she's got a CBT, and I don't really want to let her out on anything with anything other than uh, perfect brakes. So let's see what happens.